Civil war in Syria could be entering its final chapter, but several obstacles remain before any victory over the terrorists could be declared. In Atanf, where Americans have a military base, new U.S. exercises have been launched unannounced. Our forces will demonstrate the capability to deploy rapidly, assault a target with integrated air and ground forces, and conduct a rapid exfiltration anywhere in the Operation Inherent Resolve Combined Joint Operations Area. That's after Russia informed the U.S. of its pursuit of terrorists into a so-called deconfliction zone. The Russians informed the U.S. on September the 1st via the deconfliction line that they intended to enter the Atanf deconfliction zone to pursue terrorists. The Russians indicated via written note on September the 6th that they would make precision strikes in the Atanf deconfliction zone against terrorists. No comment about the note from Russia so far. The U.S., though, assured Russia there's no intent for conflict with the pro-Syrian government forces, but they will retaliate to any hostile actions. So what's the purpose of these military maneuvers? Exercises like this bolster our defeat ISIS capabilities and ensure that we are ready to respond to any threat to our forces. And the widening war on terror has long been Washington's go-to justification for sticking it out in Syria, even boosting numbers on the ground with the end of the campaign in sight. We're going to stay for several reasons. Stabilization and assistance in the vital north and northeast, protection of our allies. To identify those responsible for using chemical weapons in Syria. To pursue a diplomatic resolution. Be a part of what will be a widening effort across the world to achieve a political settlement. To set the conditions for the United Nations backed Geneva process to succeed. America does not seek an indefinite presence in Syria under no circumstance. When America talks about terror, its position is the factions that have been making resistance against American hegemony in the region. Then actually the problem you've got is America's plans are being, you know, destroyed and billions and trillions of dollars are being wasted. So America, of course, it's very, very frightened. It's very scared because this works completely and directly against its own interests. In Idlib, the last remaining terrorist stronghold, fighting between the world and extremist groups, has been put on hold. The consequences of a major offensive operation in Idlib will almost certainly be the suffering of a large number of innocent civilians. Washington says it's got its own way to deal with terrorism in Syria. They say they will be better and more focused, but details haven't been very forthcoming. At any rate, Moscow is out of the picture when it comes to Syria, and that's despite Russia recently meeting with other players to the conflict, Turkey and Iran. They came up with a joint statement that put forward a political solution to the conflict. Leaders from those countries agreed the only path forward is for unconditional terrorist surrender. Turkey, though, is against any operation in Idlib, calling for a ceasefire. If we declare a ceasefire, this will be a victory for the summit and the most important step in the process. We'll give peace of mind to civilians. Russian President Vladimir Putin said, ceasefire or not, the terrorists there are unpredictable. And Turkey, well, they've reportedly already advanced towards Idlib. There are many people stirring the pot in Syria. The reality is that actually it's only two factions. There's a faction that is against, genuinely against terrorism, the main country, of course, is Syria, uh, but you've got Russia and Iran giving it uh, a lot of good support. And on the other side, you've got everyone else who is s dancing for reasons better known to them uh, to the Saudi tune and to the tune of Washington. Actually, the solution for Syria is very simple. Let the terrorists be finished, let them go, and then you have standard, normal democratic elections. RT's Arabic channel spoke with a former Iranian defense minister to get his thoughts on the current situation in Syria. The U.S. and Israel only follow their own interests and goals. To achieve those, they use the cover of chemical weapons accusations. The U.S. and Israel skew world public opinion through a destructive information war. The only chance for the countries is to address the UN, where they constantly face an American veto. 
The US follows the law of the jungle when it comes to Syria and the world in general. Americans and Israelis do not care about civilian casualties. I will never forget one U.S. general boarding an American ship in the Persian Gulf and stating, Iranian people do not deserve to live on this land. First of all, we need to eliminate the danger Idlib poses to Aleppo, Hama, Homs and Damascus. It shouldn't be accepted that terrorists possessing different kinds of weapons have resettled to some other city. Secondly, we need to separate terrorist groups from the armed opposition so that the latter could fight the terrorists together with the Syrian government.